That's a good amount of shad. Beautiful, beautiful. We got a few little guys. A few. How about that? Does that work? Yeah. Oh, what a pancake that is. The biggest I've ever caught. That's mm. a couple big guys. All right, guys, we're here at our spot finally, and we got a little bit of daylight left, so we're gonna get going. So here's how I do it. I basically I just coil it around my wrist. If you've never, if you're new to cast netting, your cast net should come with a loop already in. When I first started, I used to just put my hand in there and sometimes it would fling off. So now I just kind of take it and make a little lassie, put it in there and then just loop it up. Two to three feet at a time, who knows. And then I grab the horn, hold it with my hand that's holding the rope, take it about another uh, foot down right here and kind of bring it down like there. And then you want to take right where your waist is, just kind of grab it right there, and you kind of twist outward, not inward, outward. And then from here, it's kind of, should be sitting kind of right up to waist level. What I do is I take about two thirds of it, pull it out, about like that, and about foot, foot and a half high, and then again, twist out. So that wrist rotating outward, because when you throw it, you want it to release properly. At this point, you should be holding everything all in one hand. Got about a third down here, two thirds up here. All you have to do is take your leader line closest to you, pull it up to you, and then you just kind of release right here and kind of let it fall, uh, kind of throw out and release. And then you kind of let it just float off your hand a little bit on this side. Sometimes I give it a little bit of spin, but we'll see what we get this first cast here. Um, I like to kind of hug the little wall over here, so. So I didn't get as close to the wall as I wanted to, but hopefully we still get some good stuff. I'll let it sit on the bottom for a second, and then I pull up. Real good, and I don't feel. Sometimes you can feel how heavy this is when you got a bunch of fish in it. Oh my gosh, dude, that is amazing! Holy oh God, my dude. gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh. I'm throwing again. No, I don't need any more. I can't. Yeah, half of these will die, dude. No. Look at this, Matt. It's like. And I didn't feel that, so nothing. Might have got here a little too late Whoa. today. Possibly. That's the plan. I got one little guy. That's, uh, would you put that in your tank? I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. He's, he's fairly tiny. He can go back to his homeland. Hmm. Let's try the second bay and see what we get. It's real muddy over here. Again, I hit the wall, but who knows? You end up catching something with, so. Let's hope that's the case. Well, it's like we came at the wrong time. This place really is all about timing. This is also a spot we get a lot of our shad at. This time, we used to go out to uh, Olathe Lake. Used to have some good spots. and. We've done some restructuring, so we'll take this as a sign that we're in the wrong spot right now. So we're gonna go 
to another spot nearby. It's a hidden spot, I can't tell you. Matt's gonna show you how he throws the cast net out and hopefully he gets on something. Yeah, hopefully he can. All right guys, we're at the other spot. Too bad we couldn't get anything at that last one, but Nick was throwing some good ones there. So here's my net, I'm a little weird. It Everything starts for me like, like right from when you open your bucket to get your net. I'm trying to find my handle because once you get your handle, you, basically the loop, you can get that. You're kind of in control now and you can see any snags. If there's any knots in this, make sure everything's good. And then by the horn, pull it up. I kind of just kind of give it a little shake just in case there was a couple. Anything down here. Now, if there's like sometimes these lines that are in here that actually uh, pull up the lead. Sometimes they will, uh, there'll be something either uh, uh, in a knot or, it's, or it'll be bound up somehow. So, so a lot of times just by shaking it, we'll get, get rid of that. Um, this is not really, this is just the way I do it. I did, I've done it this way for a very, very long time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That's too many fish, man. <laughs> that's got to be over, that's over 150, 100, 160 fish right there. Easy. I'm right handed, so I take my right hand, I take a portion of the net, then I measure out probably, it depends on how what length of net. This is a six foot net, so I'm, I'm only going to grab two handfuls of about, probably, probably about three feet long. And I'm gonna bunch it up in my right hand. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab, grab out three. And I'm just gonna put it right in this hand here. Now this is more of a way to learn. It's, it's actually harder on your body. The way that, that Nick showed you is the way that I, I should be doing it. So what you'll do is take your left hand about as, as far apart as you can. Whereas what you're gonna wanna do is Throw this, twist your body. That so, was a good pancake right there. A lot of times I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over. I, I I don't let it sit on the bottom. Once I feel it hit the bottom, I instantly pull up. Uh, so it's just a doesn't really. So I've got some in He's here. Got some in there. Look at that. He's got some so, shad. Perfect freezing shad. Oh man. So. That is, that's a good amount of shad. It's beautiful, beautiful shad. That is the perfect. So typically, uh, typically to us, this would be very, very small shad. And this is about six inch, about six inch, six, seven inch shad. We like the foot 14, 16 inch, inch shad. But lately I've been wanting to use this. Um, because there's a lot of uh, fish right now biting on smaller bites and I've been actually looking for some of these. So this is perfect for us to get some in our freezer. We'll let you know if we can actually keep these alive in the tank, we'll show you guys footage of, of that. But well, let's get some water. Let's see if we get some, some fresh water. Anytime you catch shad, if you, if you can touch them the least, I would uh, definitely, definitely not touch them if you if you drop one and have to touch it, of course, that just happens. But the more of the oils that stay on their body, and the less that you stress them out, otherwise they'll dirty up the water with all the the oils and stress coming off them. So I'm just gonna dump this straight into the bucket, and that way I didn't I didn't drop them on the the asphalt or anything like that. And get some of those chunks out of there. It's going to be good for freezing and using for catfish bait, which is <laughs> what this channel's about. So a lot of times after you catch something, your your net ends up looking something like this, where basically this is underneath that. And so that's one thing is that you can do all the techniques we just showed you, but if you have one little small tangle, you're going to ruin your entire cast. So that's why that's why it, it comes like natural for me every time to just kind of run my fingers along the rope here, just to make sure everything is 
is the way it should be. And then, I, and then I always will shake it like this, take a piece here. And if you see here, there is a tangle. You can almost mm -hmm. see where it is. Oh, we see it. Do you see that tangle? So see, a lot of times it will correct itself with a shake like that. So that, and that right there, I could have tried to, I could have, I could have tried and threw, look through it like I just did, but it would have not worked as great. And I probably wouldn't have opened it up, up at all. So, yeah. so I'm just checking for any more of those. I might try the, the far right over here. If we get any like bluegill or anything like that, I might just keep them separate from the, ch from the Chad, from the gizzard Chad, so that we can try and keep those guys alive. As I, I see a fish right here. You see him swimming? Where? He's swimming into that bay. Oh yeah. Well, that's a shad. Is that a, is that a big shad? Yeah, that's a giant. That, well, I don't know how giant, but that's a shad, all right. Yeah, I can see so, the camera too. Nick can help me out here. So quality of nets, guys. Um, as you learn, I I, I kind of suggest. I mean, Walmart has some cheap nets, four or five foot. To learn how to throw on your first one, I'd probably get like a five foot and learn with, learn with that. And they'll be like 40, 45 bucks at Walmart. But you, you can spend a lot of money on cast nets. This is actually a cheaper one six, since it is just a, um, a six foot net. But what is this, Betts? Which one is this? I don't know. Yeah, we'll go ahead and show a picture of it right here. This is the, that's the one that this one is. I think it's the high tide. But um, I think this one was like $60. There uh, we go. That was a little Something better. was crossed up a little bit. That was better. But I'm going to go ahead and follow it down. And it stopped right kind of in there. We got something here. We got, got a couple more. Couple more little shads in there. Couple more chads. The one we saw swimming by was a, was their like daddy. <laughs> Since we didn't have any luck on the other side, I'll show you on this side again. Again, just like Matt showed, you kind of coil it out. Two, three foot spools. Pull your horn up. First thing you do, make sure you can get a good open net there. Looks right. pretty open. Since it's open, we'll take it here. Get it about waist level here. Right there. Do our outside curl. And then since it's already spread out, we can just kind of grab it along here. We get about, there we go. Another outside curl, bam. And then I'm gonna try the second bay. Mm, good just choice. Because. Okay, again, like I said, pull out leader here and then just kind of twist out and let go and let this fall off your hand a little bit, so. Mm. Like that. Mm -hmm. Didn't open as wide as it could have, but you know what, that's okay. Hey, if it's open. It's open. Hit the ground. Coming up. And I see a couple in there, so I've got a little. Oh, interesting. Okay, do you want these for your tank, or they're too small? For oh. They're too small for me. You know, I would almost. It would almost be fun to take them, but the only thing is, that I I could see them getting stuck in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's just put them back where they belong. And see, see guys, this this is kind of why like I've learned two or three different ways to throw, and depending on um, how big your net is, I kind of change it up. But for the five, six, and seven foot nets, this way seems to work for me. I do have a I'm six foot three, so I kind of have a long arm span. But how fast it loads up is the reason why, because I can coil my net or coil the rope and then just. Take can I it. can I chime in right there? Yeah. Also, the way that I do it, if you get a ten foot net, there's no, it's not impossible the way that I do it. So, 
Eventually you're going to need to learn to do it this way, but starting out, um, I mean, you, starting out, if I could do it again, I, I would just learn how to do it this way. The other way just is kind of a you know, we'll do this. bad we'll habit that catches fish. The wall. That one was a little more spread open, but then again, it hit the wall there a little bit, so it's okay though. And as you're pulling the fish up, it's already coiling the rope for the next. Okay, we got a couple big ones. A mm. couple big guys. No, um, that's nice. So, so the shad have moved on, and we are now into the crappie. And of course, we cannot keep the crappie because those are game fish that need to be caught by a pole. But this is good keeping size. Would you keep this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Ooh, a lot of these guys. Some of these are. That's a keeper, mm -hmm. good and purpley. Beautiful. Here's I'll, I'll a like keeper. Some, yeah, definitely. That, yeah. And he's a feisty keeper. <laughs> but most of these are a little too tiny. Yeah. You know, they're, they're biting on shad right now, so. We're almost out of shad, so. Well, you can never have enough shad because. Never have enough shad. It's like, it's the one bait that. Works all the time. It seems to work all the time. Might not be the best in the water at the time, but it works all the time. Again, since I pulled up, it's already coiled. Bam, bam. And now you're gonna try to go out a little bit further, right? You know, I'm gonna try to go out a little further. Since I've seen all those fish coming out right there. Try and get a different angle of them. Pull out and I just missed that quick trip lid, it looks like. Coiling in as we come in. That's actually pretty smart. Hey, and we uh, got a little shad. <clears throat> Is there one in there? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. One left, no man left behind. <laughs> The release. I mean. Seemed like a good pancake right up against the wall. Ooh, and I felt something wiggle in there. We should have something in here. Oh yeah, we got a few things. Oh no. We got a few little guys. A few of them aren't too little. Oh, we got a couple keepers, maybe. Nope, I guess uh, not. Another couple crappie, but then we got some other ma no, massive. How's it going? Okay. That's, that's what's up against the wall. Mm. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my shad water out real quick. Yeah, not a bad idea. Fishing channel, by the way, you should check it out. Are you and your dad catfishing? So you, oh, you guys are catfishing tonight. How long are you guys gonna be out? Till We've been out here for like an hour. Whoa. Are you guys getting any bites? In like half an hour. Oh, okay. So you want, uh, you guys- What's you guys, your name, man? My name is Gary. Gary, so Gary wants to get some shad over here because they're gonna try to catch a monster catfish, right? Yeah. Something like that. Are you guys, are you guys gonna try and, are you guys cutting them up or are you guys gonna try and use them while they're alive on the hook? You're going to cut them up? So I'm going to give That's you guys... That's what I'm talking about, I'm, Gary. I'm going to give you some of the ones that are kind of floating a little bit. Yeah, give them a good amount there. Because these guys are... They're still... There you go. You know what? This guy right here. How about that? Does that work? Yeah. Hey, right. appreciate good it, Good luck out there. Hope you guys catch a monster. <laughs> Catfish <laughs> KC. <laughs> Yes. All right. So we just added a couple more big guys, and I took I took a shad out of the, the shad tank because they're all you know they all kill each other real fast. We put them in here, maybe seeing if they might do okay. Um, I've never we're bubbling it up, so hopefully some, something lives. But Matt's gonna try and catch. A... I'm gonna try. You know what? I've I've had people come up to me 
while I've kept been casting at him before, and I, you can kind of tell they they might want some bait or they need something. And I always, I always act like, you know, if I have a lot, like I, I give them some, or to, I, I usually ask them if they want some. I, that's the first time I've ever seen somebody with money. That's so, that was cute. That's cool. Um, I might, I might try to, uh, right, like, um, there's on the shore where it's kind of messy up here. Catch a lot of bass right out here. Your arm really definitely gets worn out this way as opposed to the other method. Would you say your arm doesn't really get worn out as? Um, it, not too bad. It, it, it gets worn out in the sense of holding, you know, five to 10 pounds of lead up in the air. Uh, it opened up a little bit. See if we get anything in that thing. Oh wow! Oh. I told you this is where oh, the okay. it's where the bass hang. Where the bass? This is where the bass and the big crappie hang. Can't keep any of these. Look at these guys. <laughs> guys, this is a. It's funny because it's actually sad sometimes because you see people fishing. They've been fishing for hours and they'll see me pull out. A bass twice the size, and, <laughs> and they're like, oh, "Man, that sucks." All right, guys, this one's going. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna eat it. No. And that's it. Okay, we're walking back to the original spot we were at because when we got here, I was throwing in. We didn't catch anything, but now we're coming back. It's been about an hour. Might have some better luck, you know. Might, I might have better luck over here, actually. It looks like some people were just fishing here. Yeah. Maybe not catching anything. Maybe that's why they left. Um, maybe, uh, and, uh, maybe we're going to clean up their scraps that they didn't take. Right in here, we're going to get some good shad on this guy. Order up. Order up. Waiting. Patience, my good sir. Patience. Did you call me good sir or grasshopper? Oh, what a pancake that ever was. You feel anything wiggling? Mmm. Okay. Well, bummer. Crappies. Well, those guys left a little too early. Yeah, that's probably what they were fishing. They were fishing, they were looking for these, these guys. Here's my words. Come to me now. <laughs> we're, we're done. We're done. <laughs>